Hey guys, what is up? Awesome the sauce here. Hope you guys are having a great day and welcome to a video where we're finally gonna start talking about the rate drops. Now today, before we get into all of the types of drops that we can get, I did want to make a video on what I think the drop rates are like. If you guys don't know, your boy did do his first raid yesterday. It was crazy. Shout out to the 11 other people that did it with me. The guild went off. It was crazy. Josh should definitely watch the VOD. I did upload it so everyone can see what we did, but I wanted to talk about what happened at the end. After roughly five attempts and about roughly 15 hours of raids, we finally beat the Nullity, and I happened to get one drop that I thought was good, and obviously the excitement that I'd beaten it, but obviously that's gonna get old after a few times. So what I got was the Void's Fiery Blade. Now, keep in mind, there are two sets of gear for every school. There's the Nullity gear and there's the Void gear. The Void gear is very, very utility heavy, and the Nullity is very, very offense heavy. Now, as you can see, it's actually very good, except for the very unfortunate part that it does not give Pierce. Now, the Nullity wand does give Pierce, but this one does not. So basically, I got a wand that's decent, obviously. Like, I'm not, like, mad at it, because honestly, it looks really cool. It's a flex. That being said, I cannot use this in PvP. Let, 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 let's address the alpha the room. We did put 15 hours into this, and I got something I cannot use. And I'm, at this point, I'm not the only one who's beating the raid. Other people are talking about drop rates. So let's talk about drop rates. Let's talk about how challenging this should be. Let's talk about how fair the drop rates are. I think that's a big topic of conversation. I think a large part of the reason why this is actually going to be something that a lot of people get frustrated with is because different schools are going to want different gear sets. So as a fire, I'm not going to be interested in um, a wand that gives utility over Pierce. I'm just never going to want that. I, I want to do damage. I'm a fire. That is not to say that the void gear is bad. Right now, I believe that most of the life void gear is extremely, extremely powerful because of the outgoing. What you're seeing here is a drop that we got. This is basically just a merciless ring. Like, we're comparing it to the fire one, but if you can look, right, it's almost the exact same. What you're giving up is some off-school damage, which I did not plan on using on a life, and a very, very small bit of life damage, but in return, you get 17 outgoing. The damage that you lose is absolutely irrelevant because honestly this outgoing 17% on a ring is absolutely nuts. This is gonna start bringing back actual healing and I assume all the void gear is like that. Same with the decks, right? The nullity stuff, it actually in my opinion is not that good. It gives crit and pip conserve which is I, I believe decent but it only gives a, 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 a devotion or a galvanic or a furnace for six rounds which is already accessible through merciless gear. Meanwhile the voids gear actually gives an item card fuel for some schools that have never seen one before. I mean, this is literally a 35 fuel, which is really, really dope. But look at this, y'all. This is literally a 30 fuel for ice. That's literally nuts. So it might not be that the drop rates are bad. It might be that there's a lot of gear to actually get. So it takes time for you on your specific school to get the specific piece of gear that you need. One thing that I think they should do 100% is on the nullity itself, you should be able to have a chance at getting one piece of void gear and one piece of nullity gear. And that's simply because there's a chance of repeat drops. I've only done this so many times. I've already started getting repeat drops. I've gotten two of these decks. As you can see, I've already gotten two of the Void's Frigid cards. And while that's not as big of a deal for the first few bosses, a nullity, if you've been watching the raids, it's a very hard boss. It's a 40,000 health boss, tons of resist, tons of cheats, tons of damage. It takes a gigantic level of cooperation. Even when everyone gets extremely, extremely optimal, extremely, extremely good at it, there will still be fail runs at the nullity. I guarantee it. It's just that type of boss. They made something that all of us have been asking for. It's very difficult. But the problem is, when I do all of that, and only get this one. Yeah, there's an issue there. So I think right away, I think one thing that I would really like them to do is just create a chance at getting both a nullity piece and a void piece. And I think the gear issue would be resolved there itself. I'm not saying that this needs to be done, but I do think it would alleviate some of the frustration simply because of the fact that some schools need void gear, some schools need nullity gear. But y'all, the gear that we did get is absolutely no joke. Yesterday, throughout the guild, we got we some people got pets, some people got uh, pieces of nullity gear for debt that are actually nuts. I'm putting them on the screen right now. As you can see, the wand, it literally is just a merciless wand with more peers and chat chant. And the boots are basically Mercer's gear, but they give pip chance, which really frees up your ability to use your triangle sockets if you get a lot of these pieces. And potentially, you could even think about doing stuff with, you know, like with no D lands, you, you, you clear up a pet slot. There's all kinds of customizability. You can maybe put an item card on that triangle slot. All kinds of customizability with this. It goes hard. So I have no issues with the actual strength of the gear. And I honestly don't even think the drop rates are bad. I just have a problem with the fact that you can get one from a set that you don't need after doing a really, really hard 
hard run. Now let's talk about what I think people are wrong about, which is off school drops. I think a lot of people are talking about how they really want on school drops more than off school drops. And I actually think that that's a flawed opinion. And here's why. I think this game needs end game content. And to me, I like, listen, I'm coming from a perspective of someone with seven maxes. I like getting rewarded for having multiple maxes and I like getting drops for others, but that's just a me thing. I like that. But from a more objective standpoint, right? I feel like you need a system like the raids to actually incentivize real end game content. And end game content is all about having multiple max level wizards. It's all about having a, a certain level of adaptability. So you could maybe, you, you could maybe get gear for a life and use that. Maybe you can get gear for a death on your fire. Use that. I think if you only only got on school gear I, I even even if there's a bias towards it let's say that you got rid of off school gear I think that would be much less exciting in terms of the drop tables. I honestly think it would make the loot way, way, like just, it, it would flood. It would flood the arena. It would flood everything. It would just make it way too easy to get all of it that you need in a, in a small amount of time. And I think given the power of this gear and the fact that it should be something that, you know, in my opinion, should be more gradual, I actually think that that's not something they should look into. What I will say is the other drops seem very, very lacking. I, I, I did get an elixir and a, I got a crafting elixir Elixir. Not a benefit, by the way. I got a crafting elixir, but I've been told that you can get a gardening benefit. You get uh, various, like, you know, elixirs that you could literally spend a month PvPing for if you really wanted to. So that is really cool. Maybe I got unlucky with my elixir. So I guess time will tell. I, I, maybe I'll make a video on the specific elixir drops. I would like better ones than this. I think this is potentially the worst one. But also, I'm really disappointed in the fact that we didn't really get TCs as much. I feel like there should have been more TCs. I feel like there should have been more Azot. I feel like there could have been more Spellments. Maybe we'll get lucky and get a bigger Spellment drop. But yeah, TCs like the new Sunblade, the new Starblades. I feel like they should definitely add that. I think as far as like, like you know, like, like, like guaranteed drops, I think if you're not going to get an elixir like this, maybe a gold key. Overall, the reason why I think the drops are going to become less of a problem is because people will just figure out a better way to do these and it'll be more consistency when it comes to runs. That being said, I think my big, big issue with it is that you could go in for one whole gear set and just not touch it the whole time. I think that I have a bigger issue with than anything else. Let me know what you guys think. I think honestly, there's a more opinionated video from me than usual. Normally, I just try to like, you know, report on it and get y'all's opinions, but I, wa I want y'all to share your opinions. Let me know if you agree or disagree with me. I think it's totally fine if you disagree with me. I wanna know why. Let me know what you guys think of the drop tables. I will be making a whole thing like i'll be making a whole video on strategies that you can do for the raid so it's more accessible hopefully and obviously you know ways that you can make the gear work for you in pvp pve that'll also come very very soon as always if somebody has not told you're awesome today they doing something i hope you guys enjoyed drop a comment let me know what you guys think stay awesome y'all and yeah y'all